guys, it's Sarah. So, today I'm going to be doing yet another book haul. It's just, you know, <clears throat> some cool books that I've been acquiring lately, as you do. And some are from Book Outlet, and some are not, and they're just from Amazon or local bookstores. Uh, but yeah, let's just get into it because I gotta go to work, and pretty much that. Yep, let's go. So first I'm going to start with Book Outlet. This is a fairly small haul from Book Outlet. I'll show you all except one because one is a gift for someone and I don't want them to see it. So this is not in any particular order. I have just pulled from the box. Oh, side note, I cut my hair shorter. I don't think I told anybody, but I did. Sorry, I, I still am figuring out how to do it. First book, Entwined by Heather Dixon. So for this, I actually thought it was a hardcover when I bought it but I'm not that disappointed. It's a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling and it's apparently very nice, a little dark, it's like a dark fairy tale, but I love that. But there's been so many like Cinderella's and Beauty and the Beasts and all those things, like the 12 Dancing Princesses, like, yes please, I just have flashbacks to the Barbie movie from my childhood. It made me want to read it and I looked at the reviews, they were good. Normally, I don't like dresses and people on the covers. Something about this picture and the addition of the graphics around it just really, I don't know, draws me to it. And this is probably like my favorite type of people cover because it's just like not lame looking. I mean, it's lame looking because it's like a princessy thing, but it's my kind of lame. Next here, we have a book that I bought because it's my grandpa's favorite series apparently and that is the soprano sorceress the first book of the spell song cycle by le monisette jr so this is a series about a lady who goes back in time it's very outlandery essentially for whatever reason she gets sent back in time and then she also becomes younger when she does she's kind of like an older like in her 50s lady and then she turns into like 20 30 ish when she goes back in time and she's like a professional singer and they're like a singing teacher in this kind of back in time magical realm thing it's like not really back in time it's, it's it's weird singing is like how you perform magic and I've read this before I remember it being really good but it's been probably 10 years since I read this for the first time and I saw this on book outlet and I was like oh yeah and it's the paperback or like the actual paperback not mass market so unfortunately the cover of the original it's like super pixelated on this um, because they had to blow it up bigger and I guess they didn't really have the original art but Regardless, I'm stoked to have this and to reread it. Okay, there's only two more from Book Outlet. Next year we have Dangerous Girls by Abigail Haz. It's about a girl who goes on a trip with her friends and one of them ends up dead and she ends up getting blamed for the murder and she has to like prove her innocence uh, in a foreign court of law and everyone thinks she did it and then apparently it's just like a really fun thriller and it's based on that case that happened a couple years ago about a girl who went to Italy, I believe, um, with her friends on a foreign exchange and then one of them ended up dead and there's like this whole controversy around that this is I would assume based on that based by the timeline and the subject matter it has fantastic reviews for a YA thriller apparently it's like one of the better ones to read because it's actually thrilling apparently <laughs> just a lot of people that I respect their opinions have said that this is just like so good so I was just like oh it's like three dollars I should definitely get it because I don't like contemporary but I do like thrillers which is this is kind of it's like a mashy mash so I'm willing to like dip my toes in to contemporary with dangerous girls and I'm just really excited because apparently it's super duper okay so for the last book in book outlet so I got X-Files Origins Devil's Advocate by Jonathan Mabry this is the second book in a series it's about X-File Origins so we, this is Dana Scully as a teen this is less supernaturally I'm assuming than the first one which I haven't read yet but it's essentially her as a teenager and someone goes missing and she has to help find it and it's like what prompted her to want to become an FBI agent if you watch the show X-Files I've watched it on and off for years but I just recently started re-watching it and I just finished season one and it's just like oh Scully Mulder He's still my heart. I don't know why I was patting my face for that, but it still applies. So I got the second one, and so that's all I got from Book Outlet, but the story continues. So I did actually buy the first book in this series, The X-File Origin Agent of Chaos by Cami Garcia. I bought this actually from Amazon, full price, and then it just went on Book Outlet recently, so I'm a little bummed about that. I have the first two in the series though, so I'm really wanting to dive into these soon before it's like Halloween-y time. I don't know, just like, I don't know if I've hauled this actually, I might have, but this one's about 
Fox Mulder, and the other one's about Dana Scully, so uh. Next here, it's not something I bought, sort of, but it is a book cover thing that I have created. On Etsy, these are everywhere, so I made my own version. I didn't do a very good job because I need to get a new sewing machine, but I've been putting my books in it and it's been protecting it so much better than just throwing it into my purse, so I just thought I'd like throw this into the haul because I bought all the materials and sewed it and I created something. Crafts! But then I got this amazing arc of Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. I read the first book, uh, Stalking Jack the Ripper, recently, adored it, and as soon as I finished it I like googled who the publisher was and I emailed them and I was like, please give me this, this arc. I'm dying, I need to know. And they graciously said yes, so they sent this to me and I'm just like uh, about 106 pages in and I'm loving this more than the first book and I loved the first book. It's just so dark and morbid and funny and I don't know, I just like, like it a lot. It's got lots of very kind of not preachy feminist undertones about just like a girl who wants to be a mortician or a medical examiner, like working in forensics in the boys club back in the 1800s and I just, that's something I can get behind you know so I adore this so far I am excited to continue and finish the book though next year I got this from Amazon and that is whole 30 the 30 day guide to total health and food freedom by Melissa Hartwig and Dallas Hartwig this is because I'm doing the whole 30 right now but essentially uh, because of my type 1 diabetes I just been needing to change how addicted I am to bread and carbs and cheese so essentially it's a 30-day reset they call it but that sounds really lame where you just like cut it's an elimination diet so you cut a bunch of stuff out to see how it affects your body and then after 30 days you start reintroducing the foods again and then you like gauge how you feel to see like if there's any sort of food that could be giving you issues so it's like no grain no alcohol no dairy no legumes I don't even know how to say that no sugar no sugar substitutes so like no honey, all that stuff. So it's like no quinoa, no popcorn, no corn. So it sounds terrible and I'm not selling it very well, but so far I feel so much better. My blood sugar, I like cut the amount of insulin that I take in half. No, more than half. It's like 60% less insulin right now. Feeling good. For me, this is not a sustainable thing to do more than 30 days, but it's just like been very eye-opening in how I feel different by not eating especially I'm thinking bread and dairy. But anyway, next here we have How Not to Write a Novel by Howard Middlemark and Sandra Newman and this one I wanted to buy on Amazon and then I like didn't and then I went on a whim to a bookstore by my mom's house and they had this there. It's like a used bookstore for like five bucks. So I was like praise blessed and so I bought it and it's just like it gives you really bad snippets of writing and then it just tells you what's wrong with it so that you read through and like internalize all the shittiness and so that you know not to do that. You know what I mean. Okay so lastly I have some more books that were sent to me by publishers. Some are finished, some are not. So pumped. So next here I have Seven Stones to Stand or Fall by Diana Gabaldon. Outlander books. These are like all the short stories, or not all, but like a lot of the short stories that um, have been written in the uh, the Outlander universe. To be fair, I've read half of Outlander. I never actually finished it. I've been meaning to so bad. I love the show. Well, I've only watched season one, so I'm not allowed to watch season two until I read the book. So I have a feeling I'm going to be picking it up pretty soon because I really want to see the show. So once I kind of get more into the series, I can read this. And I was so surprised when I got it. I was like, ah! Next year I got an arc of a book called The Suffering Tree by El Cosimano. This is like the first book I, I've read and put aside and DNF'd. Uh, and normally I try not to do that, but this book I just could not with this book. I'll, I should probably do like a wrap up or something, but it's just like I just couldn't get into it. There should be some sort of mention on the back that they use self-harm Ex like extensively in this book as like a plot device and it's not really like brought up in a very positive way and obviously you can use themes such as that in a teen book but just the way that it was put together I felt was a little iffy but anyway so I DNF'd it unfortunately I f it had everything in a book that I normally would love it's like this kind of like dark gothic story about an ancient prophecy thing that brings back a guy after death in future times and it's it was promising, but I just couldn't. I might try. No, I won't try again. Yeah, I don't know. I just couldn't get into it. The pacing was weird. And 
I don't know. Next here I got From Here to Eternity by Caitlin Dowdy. This is a manuscript of my favorite YouTuber, Caitlin Dowdy. I have her other book. So good. She is a, a funeral director slash mortician from the YouTube channel, Ask a Mortician, and she announced that she was doing another book, and I saw on Instagram that someone had gotten a manuscript, so as soon as I knew that there was some in circulation, I emailed everyone of the publishers, and I was like, please send this to me, and they did! So, oh, I'm so stoked for this. Death is interesting, and I like reading about it, okay? I'm not ashamed to be morbid and Okay. Next here we got Shade the Changing Girl, uh, which is a graphic novel. It's volume one. I haven't read it yet, but I have heard good things about it. I got it from, I think, Penguin? What universe is it even in? Oh, it's DC. Okay. But the artwork just looks so cool, and I'm just like, I just need to sit down and read it. I just haven't yet. Okay, so the last two books here were also sent to me by Penguin, and I'm super excited because they're finished copies, which just is always, like, nice. But so the first one is Royal Bastards by Andrew Schwartz. That is... <sighs> dangerously close to the, his last name being Farts. I have a feeling middle school was not kind to poor Andrew. Being a bastard blows, her Tilla would know, her father Lord Kent. My last name is Kent. I read the blurb and I was like, okay, well I just need to have it just because of that. But apparently it's just about bastards rising up to have this like underground uprising against the king or something. I'm not quite sure, but it's just kind of like bastards and princesses coming together to fight a common evil or something. I'm not quite sure. I should know better about this, but I've heard good things. Okay, so lastly here, we have The Return Book 3 Disney at Last by Ridley Pearson. This is in the Kingdom Keepers series, which I love. So I learned about Kingdom Keepers uh, the last time I went to Disneyland a couple years ago. Obsessed. Well, I got the first two in the States because this was kind of before I really bought a lot of books online and you can't buy them really in Canada. So this is like a spin-off series. The original is based in Disney World and this is based in Disneyland. I'm not done the first series though, so I need to actually finish it. But Disneyland, I'm obsessed with Disneyland. I have like a Disneyland shrine in my room. It's just like, I just need it. I need to finish the series. Ugh. Okay, so that is uh, everything in this book haul. That was kind of like weird and long and overdue. I apologize, but let me know in the comments what books you think I should read first because I'm so bad at picking what to read next. I'm just like, ah, and then I forget about it, all the books that I own. Oh, side note, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but I've said it before. I'm a book outlet uh, vlogger friend, so I have a link down below. You can check out my page. It has like a list of all the books that I've ever like bought on book outlet. You can look, see what I've bought, see whatever's in stock. I mean, it shows what's in stock and there's like a bunch of other people who are also vlogger friends and you can go look at everyone's pages and see what they bought. It's a good time, it's a good time, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching my video. My name is Sarah and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.